Hello, my name is Leah. I work with Intuit, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to add an employee in QuickBooks Online full service payroll, and then once you've run a payroll for that employee, how they can access their pay stubs online. So, as you can see, I am currently in a client, and to add an employee is pretty simple. We're just going to go to the employees tab over here on the left hand side. Once you've uh, loaded your employees section, there's an add employees bo uh, box right here at the bottom. We're going to click on that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and enter in my information here. So my first name, my last name. Now just remember, this is going to be a, an example of how to do it. Obviously, you're not going to put in yourself if you're not being paid by this employer. Once you put in their first name and their last name, next step is to enter their W-4. So you're going to click on this icon here. It's going to take a second to load, and it's going to actually look like a W-4 paper, which is pretty cool. But uh, next step is to put in their their social security, their home address, and then we've got single, total number of allowances are zero and no additional amounts. The next thing it's going to ask for is state withholding percentages. So for the state of Arizona, I'm going to pick 2.7 with no additional amounts. If there are any tax exemptions for this employee, you can click on this carrot icon down here at the bottom and it'll bring you some more options for that employee. Since this is full service payroll, you're not going to be able to do those yourself. You will need to contact full service payroll to do that. Once you've completed this section, you can hit done. The next step is how often are you going to pay this particular employee? So we've got um, one schedule so far of payroll getting paid every Friday. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new payroll schedule. And in this payroll schedule, we're going to get paid every other week. The next payday is going to be Friday the 4th. The last day of the work pay period for this particular payday happens to be Sunday the 30th. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and just leave the name and the pay schedule the same. Every other Friday, I'm not going to I'm not going to mess with that. I don't want this to be the default pay schedule, so I'm going to uncheck this box. If you do want this to be your default pay schedule for all new employees moving forward, you can check that box if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and hit done. So then the next thing is, is how much are you going to pay Leah? So Leah gets paid twenty dollars an hour. If you need to add any additional pay types, you can do so here by clicking on this icon this hyperlink, and you'll be able to add other stuff like um, overtime, sick pay, vacation. There's even more options down here at the bottom if there's other ways that you need to pay them, like cash tips or maybe some reimbursement. You can always go in and edit the employee's pay schedule and pay types whenever. So once you've done that, you can click done. It'll take you back to the section. Does Leah have any deductions? So do I have any health care or any retirement? Uh, the answer is no, it's the most common. Um, if you want to add a deduction or um, anything like that, you can absolutely do that by clicking on the pencil icon. So we've got deductions or contributions and then garnishments. So deductions would be things like retirement, health insurance. Garnishments would be things that are, um, that are, that are required by the government, such as child support, those kinds of things. So we're going to go ahead and we're going we're gonna to create a deduction. I'm going to do a uh, Fidelity 401k account. So the name of the provider is Fidelity, the amount per pay period. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do percent of gross pay, and I'm going to do 5% of gross pay. The manual maximum by the IRS is $18,000 for, um, for 401ks, and then um, a company paid contributions. So if the company does do a contribution, they could do the same percentage of gross pay or um, you know, let's say the company does 3% and then their annual maximum is going to be 10,000. 10, Once you've set this up, you can click OK. And you'll see that she now has that deduction here, or I have that deduction. <laughs> if you want to pay this employee by direct deposit, if you have it set up, you can absolutely hit this pencil icon and update it here. However, since this is a, a test company, we don't have direct deposit, but you can check, the, check it here. So you have the ability to direct deposit to two accounts or direct deposit with balance as a check. So those are your options. I'm going to keep it at paper check for now. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And the last step on this section is just a few more details. So what's the birth date and my hire date? So I was hired pretty new to this company here. So let's just say that I was hired yesterday, the 30th, and gender. Once you've completed those steps, you can hit Done, and you've successfully created an employee for QuickBooks Online full service payroll. 
Now, to show you how they can access their pay stubs online, we need to actually run a payroll first. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run a payroll. The biggest thing that your employee needs to remember is the net pay amount. So in this particular case, the net pay amount for this employee is $1,159.76. So as the employee, I'm just gonna make a quick note of that so I can use that for future reference in just a second. So I've successfully submitted a payroll for this particular employee. Now that they've, they've got a paycheck already in the system, there is a website they can go to to sign up for um, viewing their pay stubs online. And the website is called View My Paycheck. Now I already have an account with Intuit. I already have a login, a user ID, and a password. If you do not, or the employee does not have a login, a user ID, and a password for Intuit, they can absolutely hit the sign up button in the upper right hand corner and it'll just walk them through setting up an account. Once they have an account and they hit sign in, one of two things is going to happen. If they've already been using paychecks, View My Paycheck with another company, this is the screen that they're gonna get. So this is a paycheck or pay stub from a, another company that happens to use into its View My Paycheck service. But we wanna be able to see SBG test QBO FSP videos. We wanna be able to see pay stubs on this account. So to add it, it's really simple. You'll see up here at the top, we're gonna to click on the carrot icon next to this business name, and we're gonna click on View My Paychecks from another company. Now, if this is a brand new user who's never used View My Paycheck, this is the screen they're going to see. They're not gonna see that other one. So they're gonna enter in their social security and then the last net pay, the, the net pay of your on your last paycheck. So for me, it was 1159.76. You'll need to agree to View My Paycheck's terms of use. If you need to see what those are, you can click on the hyperlink here and then hit all done. Awesome, so now all of a sudden, look, you see SBG test, QBO FSP videos. That's a really super awesome name, very generic. And you can see the net pay was 1159.76. This is the only paycheck that's been run for myself in this particular company, but you'll be able to access all that information by simply going to paychecks.intuit.com. That concludes my short video on how to add an employee in QuickBooks Online full service payroll and how to access view my paycheck.